Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Terry Zhang. I'm a senior technical marketing engineering from Prisma Access team. Uh, today, I'm going to give you uh, some feature updates from the Prisma Access 5.1. So the first feature we're going to talk about is the dynamic DNS registration support. Um, so when customer leverage their in-house uh, endpoint configuration management platforms, such as a Microsoft uh, MECM, or if the IT or help desk staff rely on the FQDN uh, for the remote troubleshooting, maybe log into RDP uh, to troubleshooting the issue, right? Uh, so this is a quite standard uh, workflow. However, when a user connects via Global Protect uh, to Prisma Access, so Prisma Access will align, uh, will assign a client IP to the VPN interface. Uh, in that case, right, most of the DNS server won't get the updates with the PA gateway assigned IP address. Uh, therefore, right, IT and the um, in-house application won't be able to identify or even make the updates to the remote endpoints. So with the dynamic DNS registration, we provide a in, uh, native integration to the uh, leading IPAM vendors such as uh, Microsoft, Infoblox, BlueCat, etc., uh, to get the real-time DNS updates from Prisma Access whenever a user connects the GP to Prisma Access. So this feature is supported for both Prisma uh, Access Panorama Manage and the Cloud Manage, which is SCM. Uh, so here is at very high level, right? How this feature worked. So when the GP established the IPsec VPN tunnel, and as the tunnel is up, Prisma Access will assign a client IP to the VPN interface. In the meantime, there is a microservice running in Prisma Access uh, with the configuration I, I will go on to show you in the later demo. So the microservice will update the A and the PTR records to the customer in-house DNS server. So then in that case, the customer DNS server will know, hey, uh, maintain the same FQDN and the updated uh, tunnel IP address. And when the IT help desk needs to upgrade the endpoints or do the remote troubleshooting, it will do the reverse DNS lookup, uh, get the correct the updated IP address of the endpoints, uh, then perform the troubleshooting. So this, this feature is available in the Prisma Access 5.1 infrastructure. Uh, most of our customers should be already on that. And it requires a data plan to be 11.2. Uh, so this will lead to a separate request uh, if you want to consume the uh, feature. So please reach out to your account team for the upgrade. So what, how to enable this feature? Log into SCM and click Global Protect under the Prisma Access Setup. So first, let's verify, right? In the Prisma Access Infra setting, we are adding a new advanced setting. In this new advanced setting, you will notice this dynamic DNS support. Uh, we support two methods of the domain type. One is called a fallback domain. Uh, so which means this is your default internal domain. Or uh, for example, if you the laptop use the domain login, uh, but you want to you want the user to be assigned with a different domain name, you can select the overread domain. Then uh, we also support them um, uh, like a you config the internal DNS IP address, then the server type, uh, upload your T signature key. So this is for uh, the Prisma Access Infra to your DNS server authentication purpose. We also support a uh, Corporus for the authentication. Uh, now I'm going to log into my Infoblox. Infoblox, as you can see, I pre-created a, a multiple zones for my deployment in the demo. So now I'm a user without my uh with my global product connecting. Uh, so as as far as my global product connected, 
if I check setting. So now I'm already assigned with a, a gateway IP address. And check my host name, this is sharp win 10. Now if I switch back to the info blocks, which is the DNS server, right? From the A record, you will see this DNS entry is updated almost in real time. And also we check the PTR record for the reverse DNS lookup is also added. To note one thing, right? So let's see if this user leaves uh, the network or uh, disconnect the tunnel. The A record and the PTR record are removed immediately. So the IT always maintain the latest uh, DNS records of these endpoints. So that concludes the DDNS feature. And I'm going to move to the internal gateway for remote networks. Uh, nowadays, right, when a customer uh, deploy the remote network and uh, you want to uh, distribute the user ID and the heap reports, for example, uh, that normally leads to uh, overheads to deploy or reuse on-prem firewalls as the internal gateway. So some customers feel this is a really uh, com uh, complicated. And uh, also if you uh, if customer deploy the internal gateway on the public cloud, right? So that, uh, that resulting the traffic uh, cross uh, Prisma access unauthenticated. Uh, with this new feature, so the native internal gateway for RN, uh, the main idea is Prisma Access will start to maintain a DNS entry for the internal host detection and the, uh, and uh, assign an IP address for the RN node um, as the internal gateway. So customer no longer needs to deploy any extra hardware in their branch. So instead, right, any user when they are entering the branch and uh, and being determined, say, hey, I'm in the internal host. Uh, I'm going to connect to the internal gateway. Uh, it will connect to the RN gateway. In that case, we remove all the complexity to deploy extra hardware. Also, uh, in this case, we uh, the main goal is to help to distribute the user ID across all the Prisma access deployment. So you have a consistent policy construct. Uh, also, this feature is very simple, uh, per, but uh, but that means is uh, you don't need to make a lot of a configuration. Just a simple two clicks. I'm going to show you in the demo. Uh, but before that, another very high level overview of how this feature works. Um, so you have your Prisma Access deployment. Uh, then you have a data center, a remote branch. Um, after the initial commit, right, you spin up the service connection remote network and MUSPN and uh, config all the VPN tunnels. So your user, your branch, your data center are leveraging the Prisma access for the security uh, traffic transport, almost like a backbone. So as I mentioned, just a one click uh, or one or two click, you enable the internal gateway feature. So Prisma Access will start to maintain uh, the RNDNS uh, records. So at this time, when the user trying to connect the GP, right, the first thing GP will receive uh, the internal gateway configuration from the portal. Then it will perform an internal host detection using the Prisma Access Managed DNS record. And they will say, oh, I'm in I'm in the branch. I suppose to uh, connect to my uh, to my RN because uh, the branch router is already maintaining this tunnel, so GP will no longer create any new tunnel to the RN SPN. So all the traffic is uh, using the local LAN network. So that also remove the extra uh, overheads of the VPN tunnels. So after that, GP is sending all the traffic via the local 
uh, SD1 router than to the RNS PN. Therefore, we can uh, redistribute the user ID in the HIPAA reports. Also, this feature is a 5.1 feature. Uh, most of the uh, deployments should already be able to leverage this feature and you should be able to see the UI updates already. Uh, one um, prerequisite is uh, the GP version should be above 6.0 and beyond and with always on uh, agent connection method. So now as a quick demo, uh, we are also first going to navigate to the global protector setup and click the global protect app in the app setting if we scroll down make sure uh, your gp connection uh, method configuration is always on okay if i scroll down a little bit lower you will notice this internal host detection and the internal gateway at this moment, right, without any configuration, uh, it's empty uh, fields. Now, I'm going to navigate to Prisma Access Setup Remote Networks, then Advanced Settings. You will notice the extra configuration field called the Prisma Access Internal Gateway. And uh, as I mentioned, only two clicks to enable the internal gateway and the and enable the IHD using the Prisma Access Manage the DNS record. Click Save. So the feature is enabled. Now let's navigate back to Global Protect app setting. So previously, the IHD and the internal gateway fields were empty. Let's check now. So by checking the feature enablement button, you will notice the internal host detection are automatically filled with the uh, Prisma Access Managed DNS IP address and the DNS FQDN. Also, the internal gateway are, are automatically updated. Uh, you might question, right, what is that IP address? That's actually the Prisma Access Remote Network uh, RNDS proxy IP. So you can find this IP address from the Prisma Access Infra setup. Um, so this is a, just a one way, right? However, right, if you decide you want to use your own DNS uh, to uh, to configure the IHD. For example, you already did that, right? Uh, so you can keep leveraging the existing IHD configuration. Uh, nothing's supposed to change. Uh, however, right, you will need to add a private DNS zone in order to let the uh, GP to connect to the uh, internal gateway. Uh, so by saying that, uh, let me... By saying, by saying that, that uh, private Zoom is supposed to be your uh, UUID of your tenant.gpcallservice.com and pointing that to the uh, DNS proxy of a Prisma Access. But for the IHD, you can use your own. So basically, uh, you you don't check the previous, uh, the second the second checkbox. Let me see if we can. So you don't check this second box and you can keep using your existing IHD construct. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to see if this actually worked. For now, I'm going to, uh, as you can see, right, all the uh, traffic from my internal, internal gateway zone uh, is only showing the source uh, address as the IP address, not the user name. And I'm going to generate some traffic So since this device right, is behind the SD1 router, uh, so all the traffic are still sending to Prisma Access. And the username is still just showing uh, the LAN IP address of these endpoints. So now, um, 
instead of generating more traffic, I'm going to connect my GP. So uh, we support all the authentication methods for this feature uh, as the same for all the other GP deployment. As you can see, when when um, it's connected, right, it will show the GP is connected and is on the internal corporate network. Therefore, there will be no uh, VPN tunnel established from GP to the RNSPN. Uh, it will leverage the existing RN VPN tunnel from the branch. Uh, so we remove the overheads for multiple tunnels. So as you can see, right, this user is using the internal gateway feature. And if we do a IP config, so it maintains the same IP address uh, as previous, it's not using the Prisma access assigned uh, client IP. And I'm going to generate more traffic. And moving back to the log viewer. And after a refresh, so this might take a time to flash out all the uh, previous log, but as you can see, right, um, except one uh, with some delay, uh, most of my user traffic, my user ID are already distributed to the log viewer. So then you can leverage the uh, user ID, right, to construct the, the security policy, or uh, if the keep reports, you have a keep policy, you can leverage that for all the branch users. Okay, uh, I see one question is uh, multiple internal gateway or dedicated internal gateway as per region or location for RN using this function. Uh, I, be I believe, um, so basically all the, um, all the uh, RN FQDN will be leveraging uh, any cost FQDN for this internal gateway construct. Uh, in that case, right, each of the branch user, when they are in different branch, for example, you have a US East branch and the US West branch, right? Uh, it will connect to the branch uh, connected RNSPN. Uh, not like uh, uh, if I'm a user in the US in New York, I'm going to, I, but but if the branch is connecting to New York, I'm, I have no way to connecting to a different region. Um, However, right, I think uh, for the question, internal gateway per region or location for RN using a dedicate, uh, I think I kind of answered the question. Uh, and does DDNS mean? Okay, that I, I will I will come back to the other DDNS question after the after the last feature. Um, the last feature update is the global protect intelligent portal. Uh, it might be a little bit confusing by the name. However, right, uh, this feature is mainly for, uh, it's developed for the Prisma Access China deployment. However, right, for customer has more than one Prisma Access tenant in different region due to, maybe due to regulation reasons. For example, uh, uh, the easy example is I have a Prisma Access China tenant and all the China portal uh, ends with Prisma Access.cn. And all your global Prisma Access tenant, it can be in US or in EMEA, right? Uh, the portal FQD ends with uh, gpcallservice.com. So in that case, uh, when the user connecting to the global protect, you will not only seeing a lot of the gateway locations available, but also to portals. So when any user, right, most likely executives, they travel from internationally, uh, from US to China, from EMEA to China, uh, they they are, they most of the time, they might not be tech savvy and they will get confused. Hey, why I cannot connecting to my .com portal? And they probably don't even know I have a .cn portal first to connect with, then select the gateway for the VPN service. Right. So this feature uh, provide an intelligent way. So GP will check uh, the user geolocation 
and the intelligent intelligent switch uh, to the region portal in that case. Uh, so uh, it it basically provides the best user experience. Uh, so when user travel uh, across regions, they don't even need to uh, do this manual switch. Uh, also, this feature is enforced with always on GP configuration. Um, and uh, from Global, Prote Global Protect 6.3, we started to support this feature. Um, this feature is uh, very uh, robust. So we support this with both Prisma access and the uh, uh, firewall uh, deployment. So there are some staging requirements for this feature to work. Uh, so basically in a nutshell, right, we leverage a geo IP API provided by the gpcloudservice.com uh, to get the endpoints geo IP to country mapping. Then we need to config uh, the IP to country code mapping in the uh, staging process. So uh, people may ask, where right, can I have a, like all in a uh, all in one region? Like, hey, if I'm in US, I'm mapping to uh, portal A, and if I'm in China, I'm mapping to the China portal. Uh, but I want to see the rest of the world mapping to uh, one portal, right? Um, normally, right, this feature is uh, only uh, focusing on the two main regions where. Uh, separate Prisma X tenant are hosted. Uh, so it's actually not necessary. When you go into details, you will realize it's actually reasonable to only uh, do the FQDN to country, single country mapping, not multiple country. Um, so this feature can be enabled also in the Prisma uh, Global Protect app configuration. And uh, if you expand the advanced GP options in the user, oh, sorry. Um, I think I, I, so in the in the user behavior, right? So there will be the uh, configuration uh, checkbox uh, to enable the intelligent portal. So here is a, a quick demo. So a Windows 10. So as you can see, right, we have two portals. One is .cn and the other one is .com. So once the global protect is connected, so uh, this user is connecting to their global uh, .com portal. And let's see, this user is uh, on board to an airplane and flying to Beijing. So he signed out or locked the laptop. And when the flights landed, so he uh, powered on the laptop again, log into the endpoints. Uh, so GP, because it's uh, always on a uh, connection method. So once the device is powered on, it automatically reconnecting to the uh to the portal in the region. So as you can see, it's already connecting to the China gateway, and it automatically switched to the dot cn portal. All right. So uh, this concludes the uh, quick demo, and I can help to address the question in the Q and A window.